Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. football podcast i'm your host today tate and today we are going to be talking about one of my actually it's not one it is my favorite football team who constantly as i drop my head uh is in the news and today's news we're talking about an incident that happened yesterday where we had Lucky Whitehead, Unlucky Whitehead. You know, first off, let's let's start from the beginning with the name Lucky. I think everybody knows a guy out there who, you know, it's that it has that nickname, Tiny, and Tiny's like four hundred pounds, six five. Uh you know, slim and slim is, you know, you know, four cheeseburgers away from being 400 pounds. Uh, you know, there, everybody has that opposite nickname. So when you have a football player and his name is lucky, guess what guys? And he's wearing number 13, not lucky number seven. He's wearing number 13. And his name is Lucky. You know he's not Lucky. And there's been, you know, with Lucky, there was a big incident yesterday where uh, it came out that Lucky had been arrested for shoplifting in Virginia. And the Cowboys, uh, and I'm going to defend the Cowboys, not because I'm a Cowboy fan, but because I'm going to defend their actions. Uh, before the Cowboys decided they got the news and they decided to cut Lucky Whitehead. Now, Lucky Whitehead is one of the most popular players on the Dallas Cowboys team. He's not a superstar. He's not a high paid, uh, player. He only makes 600,000 a year. And I always try to explain, uh, to everyone that you know, even when you look at six hundred thousand, you got to be you're looking at things and saying, "Whoa, that's good money." Well, it's not really. He's not really even a high, high, highly paid player. When you look at when you look at six hundred thousand, half of that goes to taxes, takes it down to the you know three hundred eight. By the time you pay your agent and your lawyers and everything else, you're looking at a little under a you know, uh, 200 or 190, $180,000, uh, you know, and the NFL player's career is very short. Uh, that's a, that's a very little money to live off of the rest of your life. So Lucky's not really a really high paid player. So he hasn't been lucky enough to get one of those big contracts. Yes, I did say that. Okay. So Lucky, unfortunately, was uh it came out the lucky had been arrested for shoplifting spray uh in virginia and that and the dallas cowboys uh decided to cut the cut him but after they made a few phone calls and did a little investigation and uh they talked to the police uh the police confirmed that yes lucky had been you know, he had been arrested. They had, uh, he knew he, they had confirmed his birth date, 
They confirmed his social security number, uh, and and so and they had booked them for uh, arrest. Lucky on Lucky's side and Lucky's agent side. They did something that, you know, it's like, uh, no, it wasn't me. And, you know, the police are talking to cowboys and media. And yes, Lucky got arrested. We've already confirmed the social security number, birth date, everything. It was Lucky. Cowboys take that information after talking to uh, talking to the police in Virginia. It's time to let Lucky go. Unfortunately for Mr. Lucky today comes out and after Lucky talks to the police comes out that Lucky really didn't do it. Now I'm going to, let me give you a little background and I'm going to, you know, here on Lucky. Lucky's had a kind of a checkered past and, and, you know, he had an, he had an incident first being, you know, and I know a lot of people have been up in arms about people being late to meetings and things like that. Uh, lucky, lucky got in trouble for being late to a meeting a couple of different times, but lucky got in trouble a while back because he said that his dog had been stolen. Yes. And, and it sounds Sounds crazy, but his dog had been stolen. Turned out, Lucky had lied. So this is there's a, there's a track record already with the Cowboys and and with the police on the fact that Lucky had been already caught in a lie. His dog hadn't been stolen. The situation turned out, Lucky. Uh, he owed a gentleman. Uh, I think they said about twenty thousand dollars. Lucky hadn't paid them, so they took his dog as ransom, and they weren't going to give his dog back until he pays his debt. Well, Lucky almost got arrested for that because of the fact that he filed a, a, a bogus police report that his dog would have been stolen, where it was actually he actually knew where the dog was at, knew that the people had taken it because he owed people money. Uh, so, you know, there was already that strike. Number two, um, the Cowboys had already decided, uh, you could tell the Cowboys had decided that they had kind of had their feel with Lucky. And even though he is known as one of the more popular players in the locker room, not always is the most popular guy in the locker room good for the company, good for the team? Is he popular because he's a distraction? I don't know. But I tell you this, the Cowboys cut him the minute they found out that he had been arrested and they had confirmed that it was lucky uh, by the police, uh, they released him. Then uh, Lucky showed back up at the police, or his agent or whomever. They show proof that Lucky wasn't even in the state. They go back, they look, they realize that he, he has an alibi. The police never truly checked his, they, the guy that uh, said he was Lucky actually had Lucky's social security number, birth date. It was more of an identity theft than than anything. So the police made a mistake. Uh, they recanted and dropped all charges and apologized. But it doesn't make a difference if the police says, oh, we're sorry. We It was a mistaken identity. It wasn't lucky. Uh, because unlucky to lucky is the fact that he had been cut by the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, and with a situation where uh, a lot of people think he will get picked up, but it is not guaranteed. Uh, what's going to happen if it, look, he's going to, you know, this this could truly shorten his career. Uh, my question is, do you, with a guy, with the situation with Lucky, do you try to sue the police? He doesn't make, he doesn't have the money 
the you know he doesn't make huge NFL dollars, uh, and this has really affected his career. He's already gotten cut out, cut from the most popular NFL franchise, uh, you know there is. He's hoping to get picked up by somebody else when training camp is right around the corner. You know you want you want to be in place before training camp gets there. Uh, you know, he's going, he's going to have to go to a camp, a, a team that, you know, where he was with the Cowboys, super popular. Uh, he was very comfortable to going to being, you know, if he's lucky enough to get picked up, going to a brand new organization. I think, you know, and I, and I do think if I was lucky, I would actually, uh, use this opportunity. First off, I would sue. I would try to sue. Because their act, the police's action uh, of not doing their due diligence to make sure they had the right person has really cost uh, Lucky his his career and has altered his, uh, you know, altered his future possibly. Um, but as far as Lucky goes, I think one of the things that Lucky should do because you know, when you go to Jason Garrett and you listen to what he has to say, even after the fact that the Cowboys had cut him and then they found out that he really hadn't gotten in, in, into any, uh, he hadn't gotten into a situation um, and they had, they had the wrong guy, Jason Garrett and the Cowboys still stuck by the fact that no, they're not going to rescind uh, release because there was still time to stop Lucky from being cut. Uh, the Cowboys did not rescind uh, their waiver. Uh, and as a matter of fact, Jason J Jason Garrett just said, you know, we made a decision best for the Cowboys and we are moving on. Uh, it gives Lucky a chance to get on with another team and maybe a different situation. And also when you look at the fact that they had... Uh, had already drafted uh Russ I mean Ryan Switzer who looks who who already looked like the replacement for Lucky uh you know this is an opportunity for Lucky to get on to, with the team try to change his image he can't have these situations where he's showing up late to camp or late late to practice he can't have in, in, instances where his dog is getting kidnapped or dog napped it can't the, the dog can't eat his homework wherever he lands he has to clean up his act and he really has to make the most of it because if you're if you're at the level of a player that 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 he is you can't be getting into these situations either either by your own doing or even being accidentally being accused of shoplifting when you're at that level, no one wants the headaches. And if you're the guy that's making mistakes and, and, and showing up late to meetings and you're having these issues, you're going to get cut. You're not viable enough. You know, you look at the Cowboys and you talk about, speaking of players who've gotten into some incidents, and you look at like Daz Bryant and Ezekiel Elliott. And on some networks, they talk about... Uh, Zeke as as a guy make he's kind of pointing him out to being a bad guy um, and I'm changing the changing it to, to more about uh, you know the Daz and Ezekiel now Daz I don't think that you know I I don't think the NFL should get in the middle of this whole situation with the domestic violence with Ezekiel Elliott he has never been charged the police has no evidence whatsoever. As a matter of fact, they they've openly said, you know, after doing their investigation, they found no wrongdoing. Um, so I think, you know, and there's a lot of talk that the cowboy that uh, the Roger Goodell is going to suspend uh, Ezekiel Elliott. I don't think they should. They they're not in the the NFL should not be in the business of retrying cases because they don't like the way the results have been. Uh, there's been no evidence of domestic violence for Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, so, you know, I don't think there should, you know, there should be a suspension. That's just my take. 
Now, when you talk about, you know, Ezekiel Elliott and they talk about Ezekiel Elliott and the situation where at the parade he, he was try, he was goofing around, he was pulling uh, the girl's top down. Well, you know, if you listen to some some of the other networks, they, they always talk about how he pulled the, some some girls top down like he was he was doing this to some strange person. This was a person that Ezekiel Elliott had known for years. They were really good friends. Uh, he didn't realize that the cameras are on him, and that's a mis- that's a that's a that's a mistake by somebody that's kind of new to the league. You got to learn that when you're a popular player playing for a popular franchise like the Cowboys, you can you always have to assume there's a camera on you because there is. If it's not a television camera, it's a fan's camera. But there's there's always a camera on you. But the situation was with that one is that was a friend uh, who made a statement and said, "Listen, we're just we're good friends." He was just goofing around. There was I the, the, I was not upset about it. We were just playing around. We were just horse playing. Uh, once again. You know, you got is as a football player and as popular as Ezekiel Elliott is, you can't you have to be careful even with friends because there's always a camera on you. But you know, when they talk about there's a lot of instances with Ezekiel Elliott, there's another situation where it was just two friends horsing around. The friend actually immediately came to Ezekiel's defense. Uh, and you know, there's no reason, I don't think there's a reason for Ezekiel to get in trouble for that one. And then the last incident was, uh, recently right a week before camp. And there was an incident at a, at a nightclub, uh, when the police got done investigating it, turned out Ezekiel had nothing to do. There, there was nothing, no charges against Ezekiel. They found the police found no wrongdoing and the case was closed. A lot of the, some of the top networks are talking about that that Ezekiel could face three to five games suspension uh, for some of his off the field incidences. I don't think he deserves. He has not been charged for anything. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of the investigations have been proven that he he's done nothing wrong, and so I don't think that he should be suspended, uh, especially not three or five games. Uh, unfortunately, you know, nowadays there's been a lot of stuff going on with the NFL and the NFL has been hypersensitive about their image. And, you know, I could definitely see Roger Goodell kind of overstepping and actually suspending Ezekiel. But for this guy's take, I don't think he should be suspended. Uh, so I just wanted to give you my take on the Cowboys and what's been going on in the news with those guys between, you know, the incidents with uh, Daz Bryant uh, being late and missing camp, uh, missing practice. It was kind of early on. Um, and that's, I totally sound like a Cowboys apologist, but because I'm not. Even though I may be a Cowboys fan, I am not a Cowboys apologist. Uh, when, when, there's an, when there's a reason to call the Cowboys out for things that, or their players for what they have done, or Jerry Jones, I'll be the first one to say, you know what? No, this is, you know, this is something that is not right and and call him out on it. But this one, I feel like uh, August is kind of a slow time of year and a lot of the popular networks like to put out, show, you know, like to create news during that slow time of year. And, and to give you a little background on myself, I used to work um, on one of the major sports networks, radio stations. And so I know how they go to create, uh, and, and over, you know, inflate show, uh, stories during slow media times. Uh, there, you know, so, and this is one of those times where I feel like talking about the Cowboys and Ezekiel Elliott, uh, and, and everything that's going on that gets ratings because everyone tunes in and that's kind of what I look at it as uh, This is just my my take 
You don't have to agree with me, but, uh, you know, just wanted to talk about that a little bit. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. And we're going to talk about a few other things that's going on around the NFL. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. listening to the GSMC football podcast and the next thing we're going to talk about here is Richard Sherman and he, he's a guy who's been in the news quite a bit and for uh, two things and we're going to talk about uh, both of these convers both of these talk topics the first thing that Richard Sherman's in the news for is they were talking about in an interview that he doesn't have the the greatest relationship with his quarterback Russell Wilson and how you know they're not the best best of friends and how you know that them not being on the same page or or hanging out is kind of you know it's a splin it's splintering the locker room or it's causing Seattle not to win. One of the things I used to do um, at another job was I used to work with um, another NFL team uh, on the West Coast. And one of the things I will tell you is this. Is when you're looking at an NFL team, there's there's a ton of players, there's a ton of coaches, trainers, and not everybody gets along. Not everybody is the best friends. They're not all after practice, you know, all 50 something players aren't getting together and, and you know, going over to uh each other's houses and hanging out. Some players on there, you they're your best friends. And some players you just can't stand. It doesn't mean, and that happens with every team. It's not just the Seahawks. It's not just the Cowboys. But yes, even the Patriots. They have play. There's players that, I bet you, I mean, if you polled everybody, you'd realize that not everybody on the Patriots like Tom Brady. Uh, you know, but as long as they're able to work together, and I'm not breaking any news saying the players don't like Tom Brady. I don't mean it that way. I'm just talking about just in, in, in general, and when you look at the Seahawks, the Seahawks, uh, it's one of those things where Pete Carroll has given their players the ability to to express themselves and be able to talk about any topic they want. Uh, and he, I think he likes that because he's a he's a players' coach, and so he gives players the leeway and the freedom. But this is a non-issue. Uh, number one, they're not on, you know, they're not even on the same side of the ball. Uh, at no point in time will Russell Wilson ever have to throw the ball to Richard Sherman, except for in practice. Uh, and there's, there's talk that Richard, this, this, the, the rift between Richard Sherman 
and Russell Wilson comes from the Super Bowl where he threw the interception at the end of the game, uh, and it cost him a Super Bowl, and their relationship has never recovered from that. Uh, you have some people that hold grudges and, and, and they show their emotion on their sleeve. Uh, and then you have guys like Russell Wilson who, you know, just let things go. And they're they're very more corporate, more button up or more let, let things slide. Um, it doesn't matter if they hate each other. It doesn't matter if they're best friends. Even if they were absolute best friends, it has no relevance on the team because of the fact that they one's on offense, one's on defense. Uh, you know, I think about like uh, Buddy Ryan uh, hating uh, for one. I think it was the was it the Oilers where he, I can't. I think it was the Oilers. I can't remember. I can't remember what team it was, but uh, he was with. But he did not like the offensive coordinator. Uh, that maybe I can't remember what team it was, and I don't want to put my foot in my mouth even further. But you know, it was known that he didn't like the offensive coordinators. Uh, but it didn't matter that he didn't get along with the offensive coordinator because they operated on the opposite sides of the ball. You know, it didn't affect his day and his preparation, uh, and and it didn't affect and and on the defensive side, and it didn't affect the offensive coordinators. Uh, uh, you know, preparation on the, on the offensive side. Some, I mean, when you're dealing with a lot of personalities, that's just something that kind of comes up. Now, I want to talk about something else that Richard Sherman talked about that was kind of in the news. And uh, this this kind of this is kind of old news, but I, I it's something I really wanted to bring up and talk about. And that is Richard Sherman was talking about how uh, in the NFL, you know, they have this rough, violent game that they play with these short careers and they're getting paid less than the two other two major sports. And that's the NBA and Major League Baseball. And he's right. And he's saying that. The only way that they're going to be able to get those kind of salaries is they're going to have to strike. He's right again on that one. But the biggest problem I've said, and I've said this for years, and that is your problem isn't with the NFL. Your problem is with your union. You have the weakest union of all the majors, of all major sports. Uh, I feel like the union has an alternative agenda that doesn't that's not always in the player's best interest it's more in that bottom line best interest and sometimes the job of the union is to protect the players from themselves and i don't feel like the nfl does the nfl's players union does that i feel like the nfl players union their number one goal is to concentrate on what's best on the bottom line because a couple of things that would have happened years ago is with a violent league the way it is and with careers being so short, the matter of fact, that like this last strike, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, you know, instead of fighting about or this future strike about Roger Goodell and what kind of power he has, your your number one goal should be pension plans and guaranteed contracts it's crazy that a player can be signed for five years and only two of those years are worth anything or a player signs seven years and only two or three of those years are, are guaranteed and the other the rest of it is just not worth the paper that is printed on you know the union has to you know Union has to stand up and say, guaranteed contracts, that's what we're here for. That's their number one priority. Uh, and I think the players would be better off uh, because the NFL is not going to give them guaranteed contracts. They're going to ask for a lot more back. Um, I think if you're going to if you're going to fight for a guaranteed contract, they're going to have to give up a lot 
and I, you know, and one of the things that has always happened and why the NFL, uh, you know, the players always cave is there's a small group of people at the top who has plenty of money, but then there's a, there's another group down in the bottom that one, they don't get paid a lot. And number two, there's a lot of knuckleheads in the NFL who actually blow through their money and don't have and haven't saved for this type of a situation. That's what has broken the union. And that's the reason why when Richard Sherman is upset about the large contracts that go for the NBA and Major League Baseball, why NFL players don't get those is if you're going to when you go into pl- to negotiation with the NFL, your players have to be prepared to say what's the most important what's the, what's the mountain that we're going to die on what's the hill that we're going to fight for and right now you know if the if the when the next negotiation comes up the hill that they're going to fight for it won't be guaranteed contracts it's going to be Roger Goodell's power that's what they're going to keep they're going to go for that's not the issue the issue is Getting guaranteed contracts, players' careers would be longer, uh, because when players when players have guaranteed contracts, you know they can you know players because they know their contracts are not guaranteed and they have to and they're worried about getting cut. They come back before they're ready. Players are going to be able to have the ability to heal up and know that they have the peace of mind that their contracts are guaranteed. And therefore, their careers will be longer. Their performance will be better. That's my take. Uh, and Richard Sherman is right. The only way to get a to get guaranteed contracts and get the contracts that some of the Major League Baseball and basketball players are having is to strike. Uh, I just don't think that you have the right union to support you and, and have the the wherewithal to say no matter what this is our number one goal check out the show that's built on the mma from the ufc to extreme cage fighting they got the fights covered check out the gsmc mma podcast get the latest news on past or upcoming fights join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the mma past present and future when it's the fight game there's just one show to check out gsmcpodcast.com backslash mma dash podcast don't forget to like them on facebook and follow them on twitter visit g smcpodcast.com for more info. RG3 is actually going to get a chance to work out f- today for the the Los Angeles Chargers. I still have a hard time calling them the Los Angeles Chargers. I keep wanting to say San Diego, but they are no longer there. And so he gets a chance to work out for the Chargers. Uh, he's determined to get back in the league. Uh, he feels like he hasn't really, uh, that he still has more to give. And the Chargers are looking at him as possibly a running option, uh, like a running quarterback type option and backup as more of a weapon for them. Uh, and it's a kind of it's a good it's a good opportunity for him to possibly make a team. I still think he still has a shot to, you know, get on with the team. His last year, his last year in Cleveland, he was just. It was it was not a good year for him. Um, coming off of all the drama and the injuries that happened in Washington, uh, 
Um, I th- kind of think he kind of overthought the game too much. Uh, he kind of digressed more than anything once he went to Cleveland. Uh, in my opinion, he was the worst of the three quarterbacks that were there, and that's and that's that's saying something considering how you know when you look at Cleveland's quarterbacks and you say RG three was possibly the worst of the three that was there, and you know so he has this shot uh, to to work out with the Chargers and possibly make the Chargers. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is his time in San Diego. When you look at where RG3 has gone, where he started at and now where he's gone and how far he's fallen. Um, and then you think about back when they drafted him and how Mike Shanahan did not want to draft RG3. And no one gives Shanahan the credit that he deserves on this one. Uh, you you look at things. He did not want to draft RG3. He wanted to draft Kirk Cousins. Uh, Daniel Snyder went kind of behind his back and, and traded away the draft pick to get RG3 without his consent. When you look at the way RG3 has turned out and what's going on with Kirk Cousins, where you're looking at a situation where Kirk Cousins, there's a good chance he may, at the end of this year, if he balls out this year, he could possibly be the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. Uh, That's showing you that, you know, and whether you agree or disagree that he deserves that kind of money, it's going to happen. If If he has a year like he had last year, he will be. He will definitely get better money than Andrew Luck uh, received. Uh, he will be the highest paid player, and that's one of the reasons why the Redskins are kind of reluctant. They keep the, uh, you know, they keep franchise tagging him. But next year, are you going to franchise him again at thirty-four million? Uh, I think uh, in the franchise the the tender uh, for Kirk Cousins is I think twenty-eight, or you can go thirty-four million. Uh, they're gonna have to sign him uh, or let him go, and so if you if not, you know there's a lot of people that's gonna line up to take him. So with the money that he's guaranteed between either franchise tag or contract, he's going to be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. When you look at that draft, and you go back and you look at that draft now, and you you look at the way what has happened with RG three, where he came out and it was a flash in the pan, took off amazing rookie year, got injured and he's never been the same. It's like he, his, he's, his throwing mechanics are bad. He has bad footwork. Uh, you know, he holds the ball too long. And then there's Kirk cousins who year after who has, since he's come in the league each year, he gets a little bit better and a little bit better. The upside is huge. Uh, and I wanted just to, I wanted to bring that up because I wanted to recognize Mike Shanahan for making the right decision. Uh, the Redskins, I think, would be further along if they would have went with Shan- listen to Shanahan. They would not if they did not trade away pretty much their entire draft. Uh, they tried to, so many players. They had to they had the draft picks they had to uh, give up to get RG three where they could have waited and got Kurt Cousins, the Redskins would be in a much better place. I just wanted to add that in as my final take for this episode. Um, I really want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I know we haven't had a, an episode in a little while, but we're, there will be a lot more coming in with the NFL season right around the corner. So keep a lookout for us. And with that... To all, a good night. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www. 
gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.